Hey guys, welcome to Eagle Sci-Fi Modeler. Uh, today I go over my build of the uh, uh, Romulan Warbird uh, from the uh, Star Trek Next Generation series. Uh, first made experience, uh, I believe, in the uh, episode The Neutral Zone. Uh, this uh, ship was also called the, the Derridix class, I believe. Uh, the scale of it is 1 uh, 3200th. And uh, in researching this, uh, I found a great video. Uh, if you go to Trek Yards, YouTube video, uh, episode 152. Uh, they talked to the designer of the ship. His name's Andrew Probert, and he uh, has concept drawings, talks about some of the design elements, uh, some of the things that you don't know, you, you never see about in the show, some of the changes made. So if you want to find out more information, um, that's a really good video, or uh, as far as information-wise, uh, to watch and, and learn about the ship. Uh, the model itself is AMT, uh, comes from the AMT adversary set, it was released in 1989. It has been uh, re-released by AMT uh, as the adversary set, or just the you can buy just the Roman Warbird. Uh, and it comes with a few minor changes and uh, I believe a different base, but pretty much the same model. Uh, I got this particular one as one of the older kits. Uh, paid twenty dollars on eBay for it. Uh, the box is all banged up, but all the parts were there, so I got a good price. And I've been wanting to do this uh, model. I built it before years ago, uh, not lit, so now that I've gotten back into modeling and I'm working on my skills of lighting and whatnot, uh, I want to give another go. Uh, overall, pleased with how it turned out, and um, so we'll just kind of go over the build itself. It's it's, it's a little challenging. Uh, there's a lot of seam work, um, a lot of panel lines uh, where the pieces come together. Uh, I'll post pictures throughout the video of the build. Uh, but there is basically uh, this everywhere the ship comes together. There's not a lot of pieces to the ship. Uh, not, probably less than 20 pieces overall uh, to the Warbird. But where every, everywhere where things were connecting, there was just these uh, gaps and, and huge lines uh, in the, both of the body panels where the, where the front of the ship attached, where the rear ship attached. There were some, some really nasty gaps. Um, had to kind of close the gap where the warp nacelles connected. Um, the lighting part of it, I'll, I'm going to send you back uh, prior to when I was working on the lighting and we'll finish it up and I'll come back and talk about uh, more of the build and the paint and stuff of that nature. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to talk about how I lit the Warbird. Obviously it's not been put together yet. Uh, we're getting close to that part, so the lighting's coming in. A lot of the work as far as holes being drilled into it. I'll post some pictures up here in the corner. Uh, just look for that of uh, how it looked before I did any of the paint and just started with uh, drilling of the many holes that went in to the different parts of the ship. Uh, the lighting was achieved uh, simply using uh, a couple different types of uh, LEDs. These are pre-wired 5 millimeter, 5 millimeter LEDs. I have some white and green ones. You can get them smaller sizes uh, for this one. Uh, this is what I, I chose. You can see up in the bridge section that all I used was two 5mm white LEDs. I have them hot glued in place. I connect them together to a thinner wire just so I'd be able to run through the small section of the neck. Uh, talking about the inside of uh, the bridge section here, I, I first did a gray primer over it and then went back over it with a white gloss paint. Uh, that white gloss paint will help shine the, the light from the two bulbs and make it nice and bright inside there. And again, I'll post a picture here in the corner of a static with the lights on so you can see how that turned out. Uh, but I was pleased with it. Um, very simple, uh, saved a lot of time and instead of trying to do a bunch of fiber optics or whatnot. So, pleased with that. Uh, for the Fort cells, simply use two green LEDs. I combined them together and connect them to a thinner wire so I'd again be able to travel it through the model. Uh, had to drill out a little hole right here so you'd be able to, to see the light. And here's uh, one that's put together. You can tell that the uh, I'm still working on it. The seams are very rough. This is an older model. I believe it was made in the 90s, part of the adversary set. And um, when I got it together, it was really rough. So I'm uh, sanding it down, and of course I'll have to uh, paint that back over. I'm going to post a picture of this lit and how it turned out uh, just using those two bulbs. And how I got the uh, lights to attach is each warp cell I had to drill out a hole in a corner and will run down here through the bottom of the ship and exit out the bottom. Uh, one other section that's going to be lit will be this, uh, this is the upper part, 
upper part of the main body. There's a small spotlight of some sort right here that I've noticed on uh, the show version of the ship. And I have some more windows cut out here. And you can see just the room light light in those windows. Uh, again, I put some white paint here. I'm going to run a 5mm right above the spotlight so it will be nice and bright coming out, but I'll also light these windows. And then that light will run through here and it will exit through here, go through the tail section, which also has some windows being cut into it. And then the wiring will come out to the bottom and again, meet through there. So that's this uh, a little bit. Be powered by just a 9 volt battery. It should be sufficient for uh, just these few LEDs. Um, you know, all connecting to the base. I'm going to use the base supplied with the kit. It has a lot of room. Uh, there's enough room to put a battery in. And uh, I'll attach a switch to it here. The power line will run somewhere out the back. I'll probably have a plug of some sort to where you can unplug the ship away from the base. And I'll sit on there. I'll of course paint it and make it look nice than it is right now. So that's a little bit about lighting and how I achieved that. Alright, so you see some of the stuff that I do with the lighting. Kind of moving on to the paint job. Paint job was done just using one color. Well, I mean, there was a, a primer put on the whole ship, a gray primer, a light gray primer. Uh, but then, with my airbrush, I used uh, uh, Vallejo's um, Verde Oscuro Dark Green. And there's actually a couple different uh, Zac kinds, and they have different numbers. A particular number on this one, 72.728 uh, airbrush paint. Uh, this is the only paint that I used on the entire model. Uh, I simply uh, went over lightly on the areas I wanted a, a lighter green and uh, kind of went back over it to make some of the shading uh, just following over and making darker stripes on it. So just one color. Uh, the one thing that's really, I was really tempted to do, and I see a lot of people do, is there's a lot of little details where people want to uh, add extra color and paint and um, to bring out some of the uh, nice, uh, like the phaser banks and uh, some of the uh, bird patterns on the, on the ship. Uh, when, I, when I watch the show, I don't really see that. I see one kind of color with some shading. And so my goal was to... Uh, let the lines speak for themselves. Uh, no weathering on this. It's not a weathered ship. Uh, I wanted to keep the lines simple and, and just do some shading with the paint. I think overall uh, it came out well. I, I like it. Uh, I hope that you like it. I'm going to spin it around. Um, you can see where I've uh, lit the back here. I watched the video. I think I got this confused a little bit. Um, I made it into an impulse engine. I think that's supposed to be a shuttle bay, so for me it's an impulse engine now. Uh, but I like the little light back there, I think it kind of makes sense that that's where an in impulse engine could be on the ship. Um, so we're spinning around. The base is not the most stable base, um, it tends to want to rock one side, so I'm going to have to do something to you know, keep that from doing it. Uh, but just uh, uh, to get an idea of some of the, where it's lit, in the back panels, uh, many, many holes uh, drilled into it. and. Uh, to get this effect. I think it turned out well. I'm happy with it. It wasn't a complex to lighting. A little challenging getting the wiring going through the spaces, but you do have uh, space between the body panels for wiring, so that worked out. Now, this was the base that came with it. It had space to put a battery underneath. Um, and, uh, I probably already talked about it in the, in the wiring section. Uh, this was a three-piece set. It came with a little Ferengi Marauder and a Klingon Bird of Prey. Um, a quick look at it. I didn't spend a lot of time with these. Uh, they really wasn't the reason I bought the model, um, but I did uh, uh, just put a little effort into making them kind of similar to what you would see on the show. Um, you know, the display base does come with some supports that would actually hold these off to the, the side here. I uh, just chose not to go that route. My focus was to be on the Roman Warbird. I love the design, beautiful ship. And um, of course, uh, this is the original base. It does detach from the base. Uh, the Probably the least part I like about my build is the wiring comes straight out of the ship to connect in there. There wasn't a lot of space to put a connector in the ship, at least I didn't have anything that would work, so I simply had to wire coming out of the back and it plugs into the base. Um, so uh, that's my build. I, I hope you enjoy it. I uh, hope that it's uh, helped out and, uh, in your build. Uh, as I grow in my skills, uh, I still have a long way to go. Still a lot of guys do amazing things. Um, but I'm get, I feel like I'm getting uh, getting there. Uh, my skills are getting a little better. My models are getting a little better every time I build one. All right, so y'all guys have a great day. And until next time.